Okay. I just finished writing an email. Welcome back. From the forums, from Kevin Lamar. If the Xbox One and PS4 had been priced the same at launch, how do you think first month sales would be affected? Would PS4 still have come out on top? That is a great question. I, I think the answer is that demand would have been higher for the Xbox One than it was, and demand for the PS4 would have been about the same, maybe slightly lower, because some people would have migrated over. Uh, I think supply for both consoles would have been about the same. So my guess is that the Xbox One would have sold a couple hundred thousand more, and the PS4 would have sold a couple hundred thousand less. Sony still would have outsold them because they had more supply, and based on you know what I saw at, at retail over that six-week period, they really weren't in stock for very long when they were in stock. I mean, typically, any place I saw that had either console was sold out the next day. Um, and they would get some more a few days later, but they were sold out the next day each time. Uh, I didn't see supply and demand come into balance until about mid-January. Literally, about the 15th was the first time I observed consoles kind of in stock everywhere. So I think they pretty much would have sold what they shipped, which was about 3 million to 4 million units. And you know, maybe Microsoft would have sold 3.2 and Sony would have sold 4.0 instead, but close enough. Um, better question is, what would they do the second year? And the answer is they'd sell about the same number. Uh, they're going to sell more PS4s this year because it is cheaper, but good question. From the forums, Darth Samus. Hello, Michael. Huge fan of the show, and I always enjoy listening to your opinions. And remember, that's what they are. They're just opinions. They're not predictions. I don't care what happens. So let's get right to it. YouTube. What's the real deal? What is actually happening right now? How is it affecting both large content providers and the smaller ones like myself? What can users do to make their voices heard? And lastly, what is your opinion on the whole matter? Wow, that is like a multi-part question. So YouTube, I think, I think that when uh, Google bought YouTube, they expected that with the giant audience they have, and it's hundreds of millions of people, that they would be able to get, you know, regular, professionally produced, you know, programmed content, television shows, movies, and they'd be able to show them on YouTube and charge people. And the content owners thought that was a bad idea. So the content owners aggressively sued every time anything was ripped off and put on YouTube. That's an exaggeration. But if a television show or a movie was shown on YouTube, they would they would rip they would sue. Um, I have to say my personal misuse of YouTube. I look at music videos typically from concert footage of artists that are gone, you know, that are dead or whatever. And I, it's amazing how much stuff is on YouTube. I mean, they're like uh, one of my favorites. I encourage you to go check them out. Roy Buchanan, and he died in 1991 or two. Um, hung himself, so he was actually a young guy. But there's all sorts of YouTube videos from him playing at the Montrose Jazz Festival. He's an amazing guitarist. Um, anyway, I'm sure that that's illegal. I'm sure that somebody, you know, illegally copied it. And if if those videos had been owned by, you know, a big powerhouse media company, they would have been sued. So YouTube really hasn't been successful at that. Uh, YouTube has morphed into this network, you know, this peer-to-peer -peer network of, you know, individually produced content. And a lot of people are making a ton of money off of it, obviously, because Google monetizes through advertising. And you can actually have a YouTube channel, you can actually get a revenue share with Google. They'll sell the ads for you and they'll give you a piece of it. So there are plenty of people who produce content and make a ton of money. I'm not sure um, when you say what is the real deal, uh, they're the dominant video sharing you know, site. So I think they remain dominant. It's YouTube is to video sharing what Google is to search, you know, what Facebook is to social networking, what Twitter is to real-time communication. Uh, I don't know how anybody takes them on. I don't think anybody's going to. As far as what is actually happening now, I think that Google has aspirations to be kind of a an internet television broadcaster, and I think YouTube would allow them to do that. Um, I think that Google has initiatives like Chromecast that will allow any television to become an instant smart TV because it'll talk to your PC. And you know, I think that 
ultimately, um, you know, they'll probably get some content. I don't think that happens this decade. So I think it's after 2020 when you'll start to hear uh, or start to see you know, professionally produced programmed content on YouTube. Thanks for joining us on this week's Pack Attack. If you have a question, please submit it to the link below. Or if you'd like to submit a question to me on Twitter, address it to at Michael Pactor. If you'd like it on the show, add the hashtag AskPack, and we'll try to get to as many of those on the next round of Pack Attacks as we can. It's Pactor inviting us into his home. I am. Yeah, look at look at us. You're, you're you're showing the world your personal space. Yeah, really. No shit. <laughs> <laughs>